Hi guys and welcome back. And this is going to be on a kidnapping. So, to begin with, the family, middle age, four grown kids, the victim, the kidnapping, ages about 25. The family is well to do. Very uh, lucrative business, very uh, profitable business of imports and uh, their actual uh, customer uh, focus would be on tourism and along with tourism and importing a lot of money can be actually uh, filtered through these actual uh, entities so let's get into it the son is a uh, single He's still on the party scene. Uh, they live both in Mexico and the United States for the fact that uh, depending on how or what uh, stage the actual uh, import is, uh, they have to be on either side. And uh, they have a storefront that is very lucrative to the actual surrounding tourism spot the, the son the, the kid the one that's going to eventually be kidnapped he uh, frequents uh, the local bar scenes and also frequents strip clubs down in mexico and uh someone takes notice and uh somebody uh starts uh paying a little bit of attention to him and uh they get a little bit comfortable a little bit friendly cordial uh, few weeks pass by and um, she starts to mention an, a sporting event in a couple of towns away and at the sporting event you can actually acquire a sky type um, box seat so uh, he uh, acknowledges it and with his uh, contacts on his uh, family's uh, Social standees uh helps them uh, acquire a box sky a box sky box type of uh, of seating arrangements for the sporting event and uh, and throughout this time he then wanted to actually uh, introduce his new friend to the family and uh, the mom uh, arranges uh, a dinner uh, prior to this sporting event and. Uh, they stop by, they, they, uh, they meet the parents and he introduces basically this new girl to the family and everything and they have dinner and everything said. So it was a short one. So uh, they are on their way to this sporting event. But on the way out, uh, the mom calls her son back into the house and firmly says, uh, don't ever bring that hooker into my house again. So... You know, a little bit shocked, but then again, he has to respect his mom's, you know, uh, wishes. So he doesn't really think anything of it for the fact that, okay, uh, she doesn't want her around. That's fine. Um, I have another life outside of this, so this should not be a problem, you know. So he just, he respects it and they go on their merry way to the actual concert. And after the concert, they, uh, they're on their way back. Like I said, it was a couple of towns over. They're taking their trip back through a federal highway in Mexico. And uh, about halfway in, uh, they get pulled over to get lit up. And they get boxed in by two vehicles. Which at that time, they are both taken in as kidnapped. They kidnapped them. And so now they're... Uh, the vehicle is actually driven away. They are now in the uh, custody of these kidnappers uh, for ransom. So throughout this whole ordeal, um, on their way down to this, where they're going to actually save, you know, the safe house, he keeps insisting, he keeps persisting and let her go. Just keep me. She had none, you know. I'll take the whole hit, just let her go so nothing happens to her. 
And a few hours later, they obliged, they, they release her. So it's only him. So she actually reaches out, goes for help, um, actually explains the actual situation to the family, which in turn uh, do not really uh, plan on going to the actual local law enforcement for the fact that uh, they're not very uh, credible, they're not very reliable, they're not very trustworthy, and they'll probably do more damage than good to the actual case. Okay, so we are at where we're at. They've done a kidnap. They let the actual the girlfriend go. Not because they're good people, not because they don't mess with women or children. It's for the fact that she was the spearhead of this operation. She is the one who led them to this individual. She is the one that actually organized this event as a way to isolate them and kidnap them. But she needs to come off as a victim so she does not actually uh, acknowledged as one of the team members for the escape organization. So, um, this kidnapping crew, they, um, they were, uh, actually very skillful, uh, very, uh, successful at actually, uh, pulling this type of operation away. And the reason being is, um, when they took this actual uh, kidnap victim to the safe house, there was later this this was later, this was later found out that they had a few kidnap victims that were from out of state. These victims had been missing for a while and were found far from their actual home. And the only way I can actually uh, find it uh, feasible, find it actually a uh, safe way to do it would be these actual victims were flown in from other states uh, as what I can only explain as um, uh, investments, investments for the fact that uh, they already had put resources into these two victims. It has not produced anything yet. And they were actually giving the family members actual more time. But one of the actual victims already had lost a brother and the dad and his dad due to his kidnappings. Uh, for some reason, um, they were, the brother that they killed, they were supposed to swap it out with the kidnap victim which happens quite often. Family members actually uh, put themselves in first in front of the actual initial kidnap victim and they'll swap them out. They will not have a problem with it. They will actually, uh, they will actually consider it. They'll consider it and they'll swap you out for a different family member. And uh, something happened there, I'm not quite sure. And the other one was the same, same case same family, uh, they ended up uh, killing the dad, but I think uh, the dad was, uh, he wasn't actually being truthful and he wasn't actually being uh, upfront about having the money or something like that, that on the way to the state of the town where they actually had the victims, which is quite a, way, a while, a while, actually a while, some hours away. Uh, distance from the actual uh, kidnapping spot. Uh, something happened and they ended up killing the dad. I remember that part. So that tells you that this organization is um, is national. You know, I mean, they're, they've got they've got people running it that have been doing it for a while. Second, when you uh, pull off a kidnapping, which nobody sees and nobody finds a car you know what you're doing 
no witnesses at all. And uh, the way they executed this was just, it's, it was precise. It was precise and it was to the point. So now all this is going on. Uh, they know that this kid comes from wealth. The family can be very influential, but then again, they have, these kidnappers have the confidence to actually uh, claim victory to this actual kidnapping. But what they don't count on is the family uh, having the resources to acquire help from an individual that I can only call a heavy hitter. And a heavy hitter doesn't mean that you're actually involved in any kind of criminal organization. It doesn't involve any kind of drug money or any kind of stolen goods, anything that's how that has the actual potential of you getting arrested or you committing a crime. Um, he had very, very deep pockets and the right people working for him. And he liked to be informed of things going around town that needed some attention. So therefore, they reach out to this certain hit, hit, big hit, big, big hitter, heavy hitter, I should say, and let them know that their son was actually kidnapped and gave them the details, which at that point, he uh, pulled his resources together and within days, they came up with a lot of answers to questions that were being asked by the family. And I can tell you this much, uh, he had long arms and he had the actual tools to execute a rescue. So now uh, he puts a plan into motion and a key tool to this plan is a commando unit, an elite unit that actually can pull such a rescue from a safe house that not only is secure, but secure enough for there's only one way in and one way out of this compound and that it is through a gate, a fortified gate that only opens up so many times throughout the day. So in part of this commando unit, they rent an apartment that is actually uh, overlooks this compound and do their surveillance. They do their counter intel, their counter intel. Uh, they get, you know, certain habits, certain schedules, certain exits, certain entrances. So now they have an idea of how they can actually gain entrance it's through that gate, but it has to be done at the right time with precise timing and execution to where they won't be shut out or they won't be blocked off by an incoming or outgoing vehicle. So everything is already set into, into play. And now they're just waiting for the right time. And that time comes and they penetrate the actual compound. They're on the actual ground. Getting into the actual house is not really a problem because they put all their security actually on that gate and the doors have regular you know regular house locks and bolts there aren't any actual armed guards for the fact that you can't have any of them actually walking around the outside and you don't really want to have any kind of weapon inside the house that can actually be uh, taken uh, when you have, when you mix a uh, pulling guard and weapons and in a house environment, people tend to get lazy. People tend to get uh, 
uh, sloppy. And that weapon might get into the wrong hands. And so during this time, uh, these uh, kidnapped victims were blindfolded. They were fed the minimum. Not because what you would probably expect because so the person doesn't have any energy, so the person doesn't try to escape or doesn't try to fight you. No, no, no. It's the fact that these people are going to be tied up, blindfolded, and if you feed them what a normal person will eat, they will produce a, what goes in must come out, so they will produce a bigger amount of poo straight out because you're eating more, so you're producing more, and when you have to actually look look out for the person being tied up or being blindfolded and being blindfolded, somebody has to tend to them going to the bathroom and if there's no running water sometimes. So all that is in the mix. So the less you feed, the less they actually uh, produce. That's the reality of it, you know? The less you actually give him to drink, the less he needs to, to urinate. So all that has to come in, it comes into play. And uh, when you, uh, especially when you're having a small, actual, um, small uh, uh, a room or a small apartment, that uh, that comes into a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, uncomfortable, uh, smelly, and unhygienic type of environment. So as they are being rescued, uh, some of them need to be carried out. Some of them need to actually be uh, uh, made conscious because of the fact that they're in a, in a trans that, you know, with malnutrition, with uh, not being able to see, uh, all that comes into factor, the fear, what they've, what they've been through. All that comes, so they need to be carried out. So as soon as this actual commando team goes into the actual home, rescues them, behind them, come the federal police because if we fall under their jurisdiction and somebody needs to actually do the arrest and do their rescuing and the commandos as soon as that happens they break out they're gone they're not going to stick around for the news you know and uh they're they want to be out quick and in in and out as quick, quick as possible the feds take over now they're actually being taken out of the actual uh, safe house to a more controlled environment, which would probably be the local police station or some, you know, some kind of installation. Meanwhile, uh, they also confiscate uh, walkie-talkie types of radios um, that have long ranges and accusations are being broadcast through them radios from other uh, team members from the kidnapping crew and making accusations and making accusations on this family over the radio, just enough for the kidnappers that were arrested, for the police and for the actual victims to hear. And uh, what we what was being said about this particular family and their business, um, it could have, the accusations could have been correct. Now, if they were not, I, I didn't see no proof of it, but they could have actually been correct in the sense that uh, the family might have been in that type of business, but yet they were just accusations. And they got their son rescued. He was never the same again. He got taken out of the country and was given help by a couple of actual uh, clinics. And uh, what I can say, well, he was never the same again. No, ever again. And uh, that's just the way reality is in, in Mexico. And uh, he was one of the lucky ones, if you can say that, that was actually rescued. And uh, they went down within three months. All this happened in like in three months span. And uh, one of my relatives was actually an in-law to the family. And uh, he was giving me play by play every day. Every day was something something new, some, some new hope or some new uh, 
uh, crazy, you know, like when they uh, when they when they got picked up, when he got picked up, and then his the last words that his mom told him, you know, don't ever bring that hooker to my house again. I mean, that all, I mean, it's almost like a like a soap opera, like a novella, you know, and she couldn't have been more right. <laughs> All right, guys, this is another one. Uh, sorry, it was a little bit too long, but uh, hope you found it interesting. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.